In Creo Parametric, you can use ProProgram to swap out different family table instances of a user-defined feature. Let's take a look at how to do that, but first I have to mention that you need a config.pro option set to a specific value. I'll go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, and then scroll down in here. The option is called Group REPL Replace with Recycle, and the value has to be set to No. The default value of that option is Yes, so I've already got that set in my Creo Parametric config.profile and my session. Let me cancel out of here. Let me show you a user-defined feature that I created in an earlier video that has a family table in it. To place the UDF, I will go to the user-defined feature command from the get data group and it goes to my group directory. Here's one that I made in the video for a panel cutout for connectors. Now I will click open, and here are the different variations that I have in here. I will use the rear mounted one for an A size connector, then click the open button. And if I want to, I could view the source model, but I think I know enough to be able to place it without it. For the references, I need an on-surface coordinate system. Let's locate it on this surface, and then I can use my right mouse button to activate the offset references collector. And I'll pick this surface here, hold down the control key and select that surface over there. Let's change these dimensions to something that's easy to remember, like 100 millimeters. That is good. For the other references, I need the placement surface for the cutout sketch and the orientation surface for the top direction. So that is good. You can see a preview of the geometry that's being created. It tells me that this is a success. I don't need to change anything else in here. So now I will hit the check mark. And this way I have my instance of my user defined feature placed in here. Before we start changing the program in order to allow selection of different instances of the UDF, let's take a look at the program. I'll go to the Model Intent Overflow and then choose Program. This time I'm just going to Show Design to point out a few things to you. Right now we have no inputs in here. You'll notice that there are quite a few relations because these are the relations that come from a default template for sheet metal. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to find that group of features. And here they are, starting with Add Feature 13. I know that because I have the column for Feature Number displayed in my model tree. And this is something that you're going to want to take note of. Right now, the Feature ID is 2933, so I'm actually writing a note to myself that that is the Feature ID for the A-size connector. And right now, it doesn't say that we can swap out any different variations. Before you start editing the program, you actually have to do a replace operation for each other in instance that you want to swap out. So let's do that. I will right click on the group in the model tree and then choose replace. And we have the option here to retrieve a UDF. I will click the OK button. And we're going to retrieve the very same UDF, the panel cutout. And I want to be able to swap out for the rear mounted B size connector instance from my UDF. So I will select it and click open. And for the dimensions in here, let me change these both to 100. And when I hit the check mark, I'm actually going to end up getting a failure. I don't know why I'm getting this failure. I don't know if it's because of the nature of the UDF or, or some other cause, but I've got to redefine the failed feature. And in this case, it is my offset coordinate system that's failing. So let me remove one of the incorrect references and then hold down the control key to select the other reference. And for some reason, it's winding up all the way out over here. Let's change it to appear in the same place as the other one. Now I will click the OK button and it asks me if it's placed correctly. Yes, that looks good, so I'll hit yes. And so now 
I have a different cutout over here for the B-size connector, and I can see that the feature ID is different now. These That information is important. That number is 3056. Once again, let's go to the model intent overflow and choose program and show design. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom now to that feature 13 for the group. Uh, almost there. Okay. And again, the feature ID number now is 3056. And now that I've done one replace, I have this line in here that says the group is replaceable by features ID name 2933. And this is the rear A instance. So that way I can swap out these two using Pro Program. Let me do one more replace real quickly. Now when I choose to do the replace, I do have the ability to select a previously replaced group, but I'm actually going to throw in the rear mounted C size connector of this one. And I'm just gonna hit the check mark for now because I know I'm gonna get a failure. I'm going to fix the failure. Let me remove the failed feature. And again, I don't know why this is happening, but I am just rolling with the punches. Let me change my dimensions. Hit the OK button. Yes, it's placed correctly. And so now I have the C size connector. And again, I'm making a note of the feature ID number. This time it's 3179. And I could continue on with this replace for all the different possible variations I want to swap out using Pro Program. Oops. There we go. I just wanted to move it over a little bit. Let's go back to Pro Program. This time I will edit the design. And so the first thing I'm going to put in here is an input. I want someone to be prompted to select which cutout that they want. And so I'm going to create a variable called cutout. And again, I like all caps. And this is going to be of the type string. And then the prompt, enter the size of the cutout A, B, C. So that is good for the input. Now I am going to scroll down just to show you again that under feature number 13, we have information about replacing. So the current feature ID is 3179, and it can be swapped out with 2933 or 3056. Unfortunately, you have to use the feature ID numbers for doing a replacement. So I'm going to write some more relations that are based on what the user specifies, A, B, or C, whether they're going to call which particular feature up. So let me put in some extra blank lines in here. And I'm going to write my if statement. And if cutout is equal to, and I'm going to put, let's see, the first one will be A. For my then statement, I want to make another variable be equal to 2933, and it's actually going to be a string variable. So let's call this new variable the, I don't know, I'll call it rear. Rear is going to be equal to, and then 2933, again, that's the feature ID of the first one. Then let me put an else statement in here. And then I'm going to put a nested if then else. If cutout is equal to B, and my then statement for this one will be, let's put rear is going to be equal to, and the feature ID number for the B group is 3056. And then I'll put my else in here. And the else is going to be for the situation that 
someone entered C or actually anything else. The default will be a C size connector. And so rear is going to be equal to 3179. And let me do my end if for this one. I'm just using extra spaces in here to kind of keep track of what I'm doing. So there's my if then else that's going to use this new variable rear to be assigned to the correct feature ID number of whether I'm using the A size connector cutout UDF, the B size connector cutout UDF, or the C size connector cutout UDF. Now after the relations, I'm going to put in another line over here, which is going to use the choose statement to say, hey, this is we want to call up the UDF that corresponds to the value of rear. And so that is going to be just the line choose, and then in parentheses, the name of the variable, which I called rear in this case. And so now it'll allow me to swap out based on the inputs, which of those three different variations it should use. So let's see if I did everything correctly. Hit the save button, hit the exit button. Do you want to incorporate your changes? I will say yes. And now let's enter in different values for the cutout. And I will choose done select. And so the prompt is, do you want to use A, B, or C? First, let's use A, and I'll hit enter. And so you'll notice that the cutout got a little smaller. It's using the A size cutout. Let's regenerate so we can enter in a different value. This time I'll enter in a value of B, and it's using the larger cutout. One more time, let's regenerate, enter in the value. This time we'll enter in C, and it's using the C size cutout. So again, that's how you can use that choose statement in order to select different family table instances of a user-defined feature using ProProgram. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.